Dudes! What's up guys, Max here, back with another part of the Killer Instinct Breakdown. This is gonna take all the time that I spent at E3 playing Killer Instinct 2013. Summarizing it into a few videos and topics that I think should possibly be covered because I see them brought up a lot by people when they uh, when they watch some of the videos that I've been putting up of the game lately. If you haven't checked out any of those, there's actually a playlist right now on the channel which is covering everything that I put up coverage-wise for Killer Instinct. Um, between the interviews talking about manuals, interviews talking about getting that big fat damage, and interviews talking about combo breakers and how they work, uh, this is kind of like the new stuff that kind of differentiates new KI from old KI and uh, the similar and the changing stuff and things like that. Previously on the first part of the breakdown I was talking about how Killer Instinct is a uh, game feel, like how, how the game feels in your hands, what it's doing from old KIs, what it's bringing back to the new one and stuff like that. And uh, it's kind of interesting when the perspective of these developers comes into light and I realize like what they're going for. And what I wanted to talk about today was kind of what the characters look like. Uh, which is only two so two so far right now, actually three technically, even though we can't play Glacius yet. Technically three characters, what the background stages look like and what a lot of people are saying about the graphics. So first up, my impressions of the graphics. Um, the character models themselves, I think, look pretty good. Definitely is striking when you when you look at it at first is the lighting effects um, and how the characters are lit. Uh, the different things your characters perform with like fireballs and stuff like that affects the environment. There's a there's a real cool effect I was asking one of the, the, uh, the effects artists and it's that when you throw a fireball like when Jago chucks his fireball the fireball is this glowing color, but what happens is, you know how when you see something really bright and the that's brighter than everything else around it, that thing takes it up and everything gets darker around your field of vision, and that's what happens. So when you chuck this fireball, the fireball is the brightest thing on the screen at that point, and everything around it just like dims a bit. So you have this ultra bright fireball. What I found really funny about that was like, dude, he's chucking a fireball and he's outside in the sun, and the fireball's brighter than the fucking sun. <laughs> I found that to be kind of funny. So that's just one thing, and the fireball has this amazing lighting path that everything around it lights and explodes. And Saberwolf's got the same thing. Saberwolf has these like magic arms now, so uh, when he does like all these magic infused moves, there's like a green hue, and that green like lights green everything around the stage and around the characters. Um, lighting effects are pretty good. I, I do really appreciate what they're doing as far as uh, making the game feel next gen, because when it comes to fighting games, it's like, you can cram all your polygons into something and all your special effects into one thing. It's like, what do you actually do with it now? Uh, what's also wonderful about it is that it's a 60 frame per second fighting game. It runs fluid 60 frames per second, the development team guys said. It's never faulting. Like, we cannot run anything below 60. It is the it is like our binding pack that every single thing we do has to run 60 frames a second. Oh my god, you just sung words to my ears, let's go. I was really happy about that, uh, and especially considering all the crazy effects. Like, you don't see this stuff, and the real shitty thing is that that trailer sucked. Um, the, the trailer that was at the E3 press conference that first shut off the game, it does, the game doesn't look like that. Like, when you actually get up in person and you have a 1080p HD screen in front of you, um, especially with their arcade cabinet, and you're looking at all this stuff as far as like the lighting effects and like the insane particle effects and all these things bouncing off the characters and the hit stun and the hit sparks, I don't mean hit sparks from the fireballs, I mean when your character takes a blow, and all the crazy shit that flies off their face. Um, ooh, that's a great topic, gore. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of people have been mentioning things about the blood. Um, if you actually slow things down and like frame by frame Killer Instinct on a really good high definition feed, you'll notice there's a lot of, there's a lot of blood. There's like, a lot. Like when Jago gets hit by Saberwolf, because he's got red blood, Saberwolf's got green, so the red stands out a little bit more, it's just Blah. There's just shit there's everywhere coming out here out of his ass, out of his back. It's like somebody just ripped out the back of him and gore everywhere. However, it, it kind of disappears really quick. So you have this effect that's really cool in, in frames. It looks amazing frame by frame, but it goes away really fast. And I think what people really like about the old KI is that the gore uh, flew up and then it fell down and it would hit the ground and you would see it very obviously when somebody was taking a lot of damage When you did like an ultra when TJ combo did this thing against you over and over you became a fountain of blood It was it's kind of it was comical and I thought it was really cool So I, I would I would like to see something about the gore potentially change. I do agree with you guys there um, When it comes to the the characters, uh, let's talk about Jago and let's talk about Saberwolf 
Jago was probably the most jarring thing when I first saw the game. Um, when I first saw the trailer, I was ridiculously excited, and I started watching more like the Jago combo video that I put up right after the trailer went up. Um, I was a little jarred by his design, mostly because it looks like you took Jago, but you ripped his shirt off, and you kind of added like all this other stuff on top of him. Uh, and I was a little disappointed with his design, and I started to warm up to it after a little while. After I started playing the game a lot more, um, I started to dig his design because I was noticing things about him that were kind of telling a story uh, a lot different than just the just the base character design. Because let's be honest, previous Jago is really cool and all, but oh my god, imagine just that character model, just that specific style of clothing on a full-fleshed 1080p 3D character model like in the KI 2013, with the ripped pants and the the bare midriff and the fully showing arms it'd be a little weird all right it just it just looks a little weird and those character models back in the day considering the time frame those characters were made in man eh, it's totally fine he looked really cool i still think jago back in the day looks hella cool and i still had some reserved issues with the new jago all i'm saying is that after the three days were over of playing a whole bunch of killer instinct he was kind of growing on me and i liked his design one thing i will mention is that He's a much more dark character, and I'll, I'll have I remind myself of this to talk about this topic after I talk about the characters, the other game, a lot of people are saying the game doesn't feel dark. Hang on a sec. So jago has got this new, this new design about him that he's a much more embodied spirit of the previous character. The previous character was, um, in his story, a character that worshipped, you know, this tiger spirit, and it turns out the tiger spirit betrayed him, it was actually Gargos, the boss of KI2, uh, which was brought by Ultratech. Anyway, the short story is, Jago's life has been a lie, and he rips everything off, he, he, he tarnishes everything that he knows about him, and he finds like a new path in life, so he's much more hardened, he's much more like, he's much more angry, is like kind of what it comes down to. So he like rips up his temple, and that's what the, that's what the stage is, it's actually his temple. Um, so there's a lot of cool things, like if you notice, he wears these gigantic tiger knee pads, like there, there's like a tiger face that's like on his knees, and when he bobs up and down in his combat sense, it looks like the tiger's mouth like opens up and is like, like specifically is like a tiger's mouth is like, you know, biting down, I thought that was kind of cute. Um, there are other things about him that I think might I might like to see hopefully changed in the future, but for the most part, I, I can't really argue because he looks really good animated. If you actually watch the characters in animation, it looks really freaking cool, like the way he does certain things. Um, his standing medium, I think, is really neat looking, and his standing heavy is also kind of cool looking as well. Uh, so, I, anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with Jago. If I had to give Jago as far as like a character design, I'd probably give him a B, um, in my personal opinion. Just, that's completely, it's like when you talk about character design, it's so much like, it's so much just personal preference that it's hard, it's hard to really argue with somebody whether it's good or bad. So, um, I think it looks good. I think it looks good. Saberwolf, on the other hand, is a kind of like a redesigned version of Saber Wolf. He's much more, uh, he's much more human as far as form. A lot of the characters seem to thin out as well, which I kind of like that. I don't like, 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 for example, Street Fighter 4, have the, like, the huge bulkiness about them. Even though Jago's this ripped muscle man, he's still got like a thin frame, which I think is much more visually appealing. Just kind of how the Mortal Kombat characters are kind of designed. And Saber Wolf follows suit. He's not as big and as bulky as he was in his uh, 2D character art from the original Killer Instinct games. Um, but I looked at his story as well, so here's where the thing kind of like gets me, where a lot of people are like, this game isn't dark at all. Like, it's just, it's just, it's too bright, it's too Disney of a background. Um, I will offer a little bit of a counter-argument to that, because if you actually heard what Saber Wolf's story is, he literally tried, he literally ripped his arms off, and through the process of that, he got rid of the Ultratech, like, machine arms he had, and he magically infused new arms back onto his body. Um, and these arms, you'll notice, are like buckles, and there's like bruises all around his arm, and there's shot marks, and there's scars everywhere, and stuff like that. What the designer, one of the art guys, was telling me that we designed Saberwolf, um, probably one of the darker characters in the game, because he's like a drug addict. He's, he's lost everything at this point. He's just trying to get every ounce of his humanity back and it's all failing. He's gone to the dark arts now and literally he has nothing left. So he literally uh, stuffed his body full of drugs to try to make this process like, like bearable. And now he's just like this shill of a man. One thing you'll find really cool about this entire, this entire story, that, that's pretty dark, right? That's like even more dark than old KI. 
and in his idle stance, you'll notice he just, he does this cringe, like this ner nervous, like, drug addict cringe. And you can kind of, like, put it down to his feralness, but I, I see where the guys were talking about now. I didn't see that at all when I first saw the character, but if you actually look really closely at his character model, you see these little nods, like, all over the character as far as him, like, injecting needles into him and stuff like that. I'm like, that's, that's crazy. That's, oh my god, that's kind of, that's kind of, I don't even know if I like that. It's kind of rough for Saber Wolf. He was, he was a big dog. So, uh... However you want to take that, I think it was an interesting interesting story arc. And they said they, they wanted to go a little bit more dark and edgy with this one. They're not going to go for the tongue-in-cheek stuff of the previous KI, where it's like, boobs flashing, eyeballs huge and everywhere. Like, that, that stuff I'm pretty sure is not going to be in the game. And it shows from what, the, what they've shown so far of the game, even though it's still very early. Uh, so I think there's a lot to be shown. What you guys need to realize is that in its current state, the graphics, the the way things are designed, it's we've only seen two characters. We've seen two freaking characters and one stage. And they've even recently made an announcement saying that every single character in the game is going to have their own stage. Sick. Totally down for that. I am down for like stages telling the story of the character, especially with the crazy things like the ultras causing this gigantic bell to fall and stuff like that. What I would love to do, what I would really, really, really love to do is um, to show you guys this stuff because a lot of it you don't really see in many of the gameplay videos. And that's the problem, is that Killer Instinct, I'm, I think is a 1080p game. It might be rendering in something a little bit smaller. However, it's a high definition fighting game. There's a ridiculous amount of effects when you actually look at them. There's physics going on behind all of their clothing movement, they were telling me, behind like Saber Wolf's, all of his like hair and stuff like that that hangs off of him. All that shit is run off physics, as well as all the particle effects between um, blocking and fireballs and all this, all this type of stuff. There's really cute things as well, like when you do a super against a character. Um, for example, Jago, his, his sword super just goes like ching, 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 and just rips your ass up with his giant laser sword. When he does that, and he repeatedly, repeatedly does the motion, there's this huge shock wave that pops off the character every single time. This is the little stuff of fighting games that I really like. Shockwave pops off the character repeatedly, but above this shockwave where like the direction of the hit is being angled, if you're hitting the character, it goes up and off of them because you're hitting them like this, right? You're like whacking the sword. It looks cool. Uh, it, it looks it looks very cool. I, I'm trying to think of things I, I don't like about the design, and like I said, it really comes down to um, some of the way the characters look. And I, I think I'm good with Saber Wolf. I think Saber Wolf gets like an A, uh, in my opinion. I think he's I think he's well designed. I think Jago gets about a B. Um, but as far as the graphics of the whole game. When you see all this crazy shit happening between the slow-mos, the cameras actually make these dramatic turns every once in a while and pull out and go in uh, when you get like close to the corner or do enders and things like that, that's a good call. Um, that's, a, that's a really good call. I think, I think the art side of these guys knows what they're doing. And the fact is a lot of people want old KI to be the exact same as new KI. Like, and this is, this is the last part of this conversation before, as far as why the game looks the way it looks. I think a lot of people are kind of upset with New Killer Instinct because it doesn't look like old, old Killer Instinct right off the bat. There's a lot of similar elements, there's similar characters, there's similar looking combos and stuff like that. But the general art and design of the game is different. It's not, it's not the same as the old game. So hopefully you guys enjoyed a little bit of my opinion about the new KI and how it looks compared to the old KI. Let me know your opinions below because I, I'm down for hearing what you guys want to know about this game. And if you have any questions, go ahead and ask because I'm more than willing to take all the information and all the time that I spent playing this game and hopefully communicating it with people because I, I did that for a reason. I really, really, really wanted to understand what I was looking at, what I was playing, what they're doing with the game and stuff like that. So stay tuned guys. I'm going to talk a little bit more about Killer Instinct in the next breakdown, besides the graphics, besides the game feel. I think I've already talked quite a bit about like the mechanics of the game between the interviews. So the next thing I really want to talk about in the Killer Instinct breakdown is the possibility of Killer Instinct might be existing on other platforms besides just Xbox One. So stay tuned guys, I'll be back very soon with that next part. My name is Max, and I'll see you next time.